Hi, I'm Josh. I'm one of the creators of Abduction, and my wife Jessica and I are going to do a playthrough for you. We are playing the expansion pack version, so we're starting with research pods, and we have pink cards. We've got six pink cards and six of the blue cards shuffled together for 12 total. Uh, Jess has her board loaded up, and I have my board loaded up. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw a duck most recently, but ladies first, so I'll let Jess go first. Okay, so first I'm going to do teleport. Switch the position of any two ducks on your board, so I'm going to switch this white one and this blue one. Okay. Um, I am just going to do a swap. I'm going to swap this glitter green for the purple. That's all I'm going to do right now. So you can see with the expansion pack, uh, this exoplanet card is worth the pond corners and full house combined. So if you can get that, it's really worth it. And even if you have to burn a turn um, to get the expansion pack cards, it's often going to be worth it. Uh, luckily for me, and to Jess's chagrin, uh, I'm going to play a gravity assist to move this purple around this corner up to here. But that's really to set up these three yellows uh, in this T that I need right there. Uh, and then I have the white here um, that I need to de deal with, but I've got another white on the board, so I know if I can move that. Uh, I can do something with it. So I'm going to play this Body Snatcher card, which is kind of a bummer to use to move a research pod. But it is going to pay off this time um, because I can finish with a teleport and move this white duck there to get the T with the exoplanet out there and the two of the same color in between. So again, the glitter ducks are wild, so I'm going to collect that and that. I'll put them all back in the UFO. Collect my card. Shake, shake, shake real good. Everybody moves downstream. And then I'm going to fill up my pond board. Got a lot of yellows probably worth mentioning that I don't have the exact right configuration of ducks um, this is still a prototype number of ducks uh, but it's close enough that we can play uh, so everything's filled back up I take three cards three action cards flip over the next formation card and it is Jess's turn okay I'm uh, going to go for the big mouth. So I've got a blue and a wild. So let's say my wild is white. So then I need a blue and a white here. I got a white, but I need a blue. So I'm going to use one of my... Swap cards. Nope. I'm going to use one of my teleport cards. Teleport this guy over here. Okay. So I got a blue and a white. A blue and a white. I'm going to use a card. Doesn't matter what card to get my expansion port, which I'm going to place. Research pod. Research pod. <laughs> I'm going to place here. I need this to be a blue. Shift any three ducks. Mm, it doesn't look like I can do this with this card. Any three ducks from your board. Okay, so I can't do this. I'm going to take this one, this one, 
in this one. Come on, blue duck. I'm gonna get three more. <laughs> None of them are blue. But anyway, got a yellow, a yellow, and a purple. My turn is over. That is the break. Um, can I take the big mouth out from under you? And are you going to divorce me if I do? It's just a game and we have a deal. Nobody's gonna die. Nobody's gonna die. Um, just take my ducks and leave. <laughs> I don't think I can get the big mouth, but I do think I can get the palm corner. So I'm gonna play in orbit. Uh, to move these four clockwise, uh, then I am going to play a Dev Abduction, uh, which is a pretty strong card in general that I hate to use for this, but I can set up the swap to go here, and then I have the Pawn Corners. Um, interestingly enough, it's important to pay attention to the orientation of the research pod because you might think you want the pond corners over here but there's three spaces between the four ducks so it has to be on the main game board so I'm going to take those put them in everybody floats downstream take that shake it up one two three Hey, is the sound of a Christmas story in the background going to mess this up? I hope not. Um, and then There's a lot of screaming in that movie. New one of those. Try my action cards, and it is Jess's turn. Okay, now I'm going to get that big mouth. I'm going to use Shapeshifter to rearrange the order of a straight line of three ducks on my board. And I'm really just going to move the glitter here and make that my wild. And then I'm going to use swap to swap white and glitter. And then I'm going to claim my big mouth victory. So blue, white, blue, white, blue, white. You can see we weren't sure we were going to include wilds. Uh, but it became really important in this expansion pack because some of the more complicated expansion pack formation cards um, get really intricate and complicated. Uh, and without the chance of a wild, it, it can be a real pain um, to score them. So it made a ton of sense to put them in there. Something that is interesting with the expansion version is occasionally, um, you know, you'll go through where you have two expansion formations early on, uh, like Jess and I just did, uh, and the game slows down a little bit, but then all of a sudden you've got these three base game formations on, so it's going to speed up uh, through the next couple turns. Um, I'm actually going to get the full house. I'm just going to play a swap card to move this purple guy to the bottom row. So three purples, two yellows, gets me any of the faults. You can stop there. I'm just gonna do a swap. Try to line up my yellows. And then I'm going to do a black hole. Abduct all ducks of one color from everyone's board, including your own, and shift all the remaining ducks downstream. And that is going to be purple. So we both take all our purples off and move everything downstream like you normally would and we'll repopulate our boards just going first because uh, it's still her turn to move this done 
Um, before I go, I want to point out that Jess did say on video that she's not going to divorce me over the game. Um, and that was before she knew I was going to take this astral projection out from under her. So, <laughs> to do that, I'm going to play an orbit to move my research pod right down there. Um, and then, as luck would have it, I have a wormhole. Um, which one of our play testers slash data analysts told us is too powerful of a card to be in the game. Um, so there's only two. Um, and I'm going to take a white from her board, give her back a blue, and then because I have the glitter duck, I've got the four on the top row, two of the same color of the research pod with the row in, the, in between uh, to get another 13 points. Okay. I'm going for towers. I'm going to do abduction. Remove a duck from my board, then shift all the remaining ducks downstream. So I'm going to take away this blue. Shift these guys down. Okay. Then I'm going to do a gravity assist. So I'm going to swap one duck on my board with a duck it's next to. Okay. Then swap it with another duck that it now touches. And I've got boop, 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 towers. When we made this game with the action cards, we tried to do stuff that um, was pretty authentic to space or alien sci-fi so the gravity assist is that thing that nasa does with satellites and stuff when they shoot them way out into space and use the gravitational pull of the moon to kind of fling them out into the middle of nowhere uh, so we thought that was a fun name uh, for what happens with that card uh, in between takes i was telling jess that i probably played 500 solo games uh, during the play testing of this and I can kind of see everything happening in bullet time uh, see into the future um, got an orbit card here so I'm gonna rotate these guys clockwise so what you're saying is the more you play it the, the more, more you awesome it, you are at it the more awesome you are at it and I'm gonna take gooseneck which again base formation cards are less valuable than the expansions but this is the most valuable card on the table uh, so it's a good one to take Okay, um, this is just my arrangement, and I'm going to go for the gridlock, and without using a card, I already have the gridlock. <laughs> so, three of the same, and three of the same. The glitter duck is a wild, so that's a yellow. So I've got yellow, 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 blue, blue, and wild makes another blue. Boom, baby. So again, you can see how those glitter ducks show up to really help uh, those expansion cards um, not just be possible, but occasionally be easy. All right, so we've got the last expansion formation on the table. Um, let me make sure Jess doesn't get that. And I am going to do it by playing a shape shifter uh, to get this blue guy up here. And I've got three vertical and two of the cross I need to get the proton. Uh, and then I'll get the swap to move this blue and exchange them for the yellow. And these are mine. Okay, without even doing anything, I've got reflection. Purple, purple, purple. Purple. Glitter is purple. Glitter is purple. So reflection is... Um, top row has to be the same as the bottom row, but the colors can be anything. So like this could be yellow, yellow, blue, blue, pink, pink, or it could be all purple like Jess had, uh, or sort of any combination there. Um, something that's really interesting, we're in the end game um, and almost done collecting all the formation cards. I don't know that I've ever seen this happen uh, during any of the play testing, where usually the end game and the expansion pack uh, 
version of the game kind of slows down because there's a card that's out there that's really difficult to get and it takes the player several turns to kind of set up and make it happen. Um, but we actually ended up with not just base game cards, but but two or three of the, the easiest base game cards uh, in our yeah, end game. So it's going to go, two. you can't do two on the same turn. Why not? Because that's not... I that's thought you couldn't use all of your cards. But you can only collect one formation. Anyway, so the end game on this is going to be uh, faster than it might be otherwise. All right, so I'm going to get the birds of the feather. Um, I am going to. How am I going to get the birds of the feather? I know I can do it. Had a bunch of beers. Um, it's slowing down a little bit. Uh, if I abduct this dude, get him out of the way, that puts. The three in a row, and then I just have to uh, channel or kill me if I play the wormhole to move my research potty. Then that's the end game. I'll play the body snatcher. Go here, four in a row. I am also at the end of my cup, but I can see that I have this without having to do anything. Two purples, two blues. And that is game. All right, so we're counting up our score. I'll do mine out loud, and Jess can do hers silently and decide if she wants to share or not. So that's 13, 20, 33, 38, 44, 55. And really it just came down to, uh, if you were following along at home, um, I got these two big expansion pack cards right out of the gate. And 24 points early on like that is you know, a really tough amount for anybody to overcome. Pretty dope, but I got, what do I get? 33, 37, 39. 39. Uh, so pretty close. Uh, fun game. I did say earlier um, and have told Jess this several times during the game, um, you know, between me, Evan, uh, and our friend and data analyst Chandler, we the three of us probably played 500 games each. Um, so we got very fluent in collecting formations. Um, so I guess that's my way of saying if you see any of the three of us uh, out in public in a bar playing this game, um, don't play against us for money. I uh, hope you enjoyed it.